All right, traders, welcome to today's recap. This is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group. And uh, yeah, looking at FDX here after hours, they had a really good number for earnings. So good to see that. Good to see a, uh, something out of tech, I would say, at this point. Uh, it was, we were looking at this. I put a, put a trade idea together, the 155, 160 call spread for uh, FTX, a nice uh, little earnings trade. But yeah, 372 versus, <clears throat> versus 311 and the revenues beat as well. Um, so EPS and look at the guidance to 15, 15 to 1540 versus estimated 1367. So again, you know, at this point, um, like I said in just a second ago, it's just good to see. We're seeing a lot of strength, again, out of tech and small tech, which I'm going to go over in today's uh, today's video and some individual names to keep an eye on. But just nice to see uh, somebody else kind of uh, really come out and, and have really nice earnings. So uh, you can see what they're doing after the open. So what do we get today? Um, we'll start with the, with the S&P. Uh, you know, I'm kind of just I'm excited that we're getting closer to the to the Fed meeting. And I think just getting this off our plate. I don't think there's been, um, you know, I think some some investors, as I said yesterday, uh, you know, I think have been sitting on their hands just waiting for uh, waiting for this Fed meeting to be over with. Um, you know, basically what I've been seeing is, um, you know, just not a lot of conviction. Right. Uh, the S&P finished up five basis points, basically a doji. I mean, not not really uh, a very exciting looking candle and, and actually looks pretty bad. So so what am I, you know, what am I excited about? Just a lot of good things besides this, right? Even the NASDAQ. Um, so sorry, I just wanted to show the, the NASDAQ chart. But, um, you know, a, a move higher from the lows and just finally a day where we didn't completely capitulate. I think that's what I'm excited about. Um, you know, we could point to a couple different things here as I wait for this to adjust here. But look at the Chinese Internet ETF. You know, again, uh, I really think and you could you could probably argue against me here. But um, I think for the most part, really, the U.S. markets have been underperforming globally. And at least in the short term, the, over the last five days, uh, there's been some nice pockets of strength in different areas and just outside of the, the, the major uh, U.S. averages. But look at the Chinese Internet ETF up to, you know, right, getting very close to breaking out up 2.2 percent today. Just a, a lot of names within this group that I think are looking really constructive. Look at BZUN take out the um, take out the highs there. 5168. That's a name that I'm long. Uh, I'm long both in options and in cash. So looking really good in that one. Uh, I think this Momo is starting to look interesting. This is the um, the China Tinder. I mean, look at these charts. These things look pretty pretty positive, right? I mean, up 4.8 percent today. Of course, Alibaba also had some uh, did okay today. Ha didn't get back to the, to where we were last week, but pretty close. You know, I saw that in a bunch of different charts. The stronger names took out yesterday's weakness pretty nicely. So Baba did that today. Um, one or two other names in this space that I think are interesting. Weibo, um, you know, a decent fade from the highs. Uh, YY also has some strength to it after kind of a weird earnings report where it started to go higher in the beginning of the day and went lower. So again, you know, it's one of my favorite groups. Basically anything with momentum, uh, you know, I'm, I'm after. And this group continues to show momentum. Uh, and, and, and some of those names are really outperforming, but the whole group, right? When you, when you look and we see, we, you look over and you see the SPY up 17 basis points, Q's up 30 basis points, and the Chinese internet group up 2.2%, you know, what would you rather trade? So um, for me and, and my stance is, uh, you know, all I need is the market basically to not capitulate, to not open on the highs and finish on its lows. And uh, we can make some money doing that. We'll, we'll find the individual names that, that are moving. Um, same thing with in the U.S., you know, some smaller cap tech names. Look at NTNX up 1.6% today. Splunk, look at the Splunk made a 52-week high today, uh, up 3%. So again, look at, and again, I, I know a lot of this is concentrated in technology, but you know, it. I don't. You know, I, I'm not that worried about that right now. Um, you know, I, I'm just worried about finding the, the momentum in the market. This one, I think, is a must-watch. Um, you know, you could formulate your own opinion at this point. One, two, three, four, five, six. Can six out of seven candles have touched this uh, this 251 level. At some point, I think 
Nvidia might be ready to break. My my guess is that this is going to go higher. Uh, so um, I would watch that 251. You could just basically set an alert and wait for that confirmation instead of trying to guess which way it's going to go. A close, and I said this the other day, it wasn't ready to go. Had a big big down day, but nice. Um, I would call this a bullish engulfing candle. Um, and watch watch a close above the value area, uh, 251. Set your alert, see if it closes there. And I like a long in that name if that happens. Uh, so what did we see today in option activity? Uh, we, you know, I, I've been trading a little bit uh, less than normal, but caught this first solar trade uh, today. This was a name that was on my watch list going into the beginning of the week. And uh, we saw some repeat call buying in it today. So I jumped on for solar. So again, nice to see, you know, it, it, again, the activity is still less than average, but you know, good to see for solar. You can see two two different orders, um, and we saw some of this yesterday, which kind of alerted me to it. Um, how about this name, Box? You know, a name that we haven't seen call buying, and and you know, I think since we saw call buying all through before they reported earnings, they had a bad earnings report and fell down pretty decently, and we haven't really seen much call buying in this name at all. So really caught some nice momentum here, up 3.7% for the day. So again, gave you an opportunity to day trade. You know, this is basically where the calls went up today um, at 21.28, and, ex and it extended all the way up to uh, to 21.80. So gave you a nice, again, always look to see what time the, the, um, the calls went up. I know there's a bunch of people who have a habit who talk about option activity, and they don't tell you where the calls came in. Uh, but this is basically where the where the calls came in right right on this bar today and then they added along the way so um you know again a name that hasn't done much you know the for me the right way to play these names is you know you could play it as a day trade and then basically at the end of the day kind of decide if you're going to roll it into a swing trade with the profits that's basically what i did today in first solar i was in uh first solar april calls and uh you know, I took a couple targets and then I made it into, um, I bought just a few of the May calls, uh, rolling that out, considering it's got a little momentum and uh, we'll see where it wants to go. But again, playing with, with the profits in that name. Uh, a couple other groups that we saw some activity in, we saw some of uh, a few different times, Applied Materials weekly calls, uh, Micron reports this week. So I don't know if that's what they're up to. But uh, those were active this uh, today. Again, I don't. Again, I don't know if there's a lot of crossover between Applied Materials and Micron in terms of their business units. But I don't know. I'm just trying to formulate uh, uh, an idea there. Um, also, oh, I know I wanted to talk about a couple other names. Amazon. That was the other trade that I put on today. Um, I talked about this yesterday. How I thought one, two, three, four down days, and then a fifth down day into the into a twenty. Uh, it's a support 20 period moving average compelled me to go long this. So I did add a April call spread in this and beautiful um, closed right on right on the highs today. So um, love the strength out of Amazon. And again, especially when the market is having a difficult time as it's had in, in the U.S., um, I like to gravitate to the strength and go after best of breed when we have a uh, when, when we have a weak tape. And that strategy has worked pretty well for me. Um, one other, so I just wanted to show this. I, I put this chart on, on, um, I put this on Twitter earlier, but I just wanted to show you that I, because again, I know some people, they don't, uh, you know, they're only looking at the, at the, at the U S market, but take a look at what's been happening here in the Hang Seng. Uh, as you know, I talked about the Chinese internet names. Um, I want to just talk about this briefly, if I can bring it up on Bloomberg. It's just not letting me do. I'll just bring another screen over. Oh, uh, getting the uh, getting the screen that does not want me to show that. But basically, as I can't uh, show this to you right this second, actually, I might have this up from earlier. Ah, yes, here we go. I do have this up, so I don't have to show you. But this is the Hang Seng over the last five days. Notice what is what what's been going on here. Uh, you know, it kind of just adds to my thought of the U.S. market is just bringing down the rest of the world right now, at least in terms of emerging markets. Look at how the Hang Seng has been opening. Every time there's weakness in the U.S., it opens up lower, finishes on the highs. Uh, whoops. 
uh, opens opens on the lows, finishes on the highs. Opens on the lows, maybe not finishes on the highs perfectly. Same thing with here. Didn't finish exactly on the on the highs, but still higher than the open. Um, that's what we need to see out of our, our market. And again, I think we're bringing everybody down. Um, Europe, the last five days, has outperformed the U.S. as well. Uh, so I think we just need to get through this rough patch, which is basically what I'm chalking this up to. Where I would be wrong is if we really sell off after FOMC, and 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 you know maybe on on Thursday, if if we don't get past this market weakness, then maybe something else is going on here um, more than just short term weakness. But I really believe that people uh, are. It's just been a buyer strike for the for the most part. Um, you know, I've been seeing that in, in a lot of different areas. Again, if you, and if you look at ETF volume, um, you know, look at the SPY volume. 40%, 40% uh, of the average daily volume today. It, uh, SPY normally trades 132 million shares. It traded 56 million, uh, million shares today. Uh, again, that's 40% of the average daily volume. So what does that tell, tell me? Nobody's really willing to put on any risk before the before the FOMC meeting. So uh, sit tight, you know, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to be a sell the news event, I'm sticking out my neck with this one. But um, I think just people are uh, frightened of, you know, hearing a new Fed, uh, a new Fed chair. But we'll see. I could I could be wrong with this as well. But that's that's what I'm thinking into t into tomorrow. Um, in the meantime, you know, like I said, I've been trading a little bit lighter. I only traded for solar and Amazon, two winners today. And, uh, you know, until we start to see the VIX, which I should have up here, really start to melt down. You know, it was nice to see it kind of melt down at the end of the day. This is the VIX up here. Um, but it just needs to come down, I think, a little bit further. It's nice to see it duck back below this tw this 200 period moving average on the on the five minute chart. But you know, would like to see that go down a little bit further. Remember how the VIX usually works: volatility usually rises into an event, and then after the event, as long as there's no big bombshell of of an announcement, then uh, volatility usually comes out. So I would expect that tomorrow after the FOMC tomorrow. So uh, we will be going, you know, I, I always go, um, you know, provide extra commentary for the FOMC meeting before and after. So if you're not uh, a member and you're listening to this video, go ahead and sign up at TribecaTradeGroup.com. Uh, I provide that market commentary throughout the day and especially uh, through the uh, FOMC. And I'll, and I'll have a trade idea as well tomorrow uh, to, uh, to trade the FOMC. All right, everybody, have a great night and uh, see you tomorrow.